nos nos da bawb a chloesor i'r cynhadledd y blaid cydweithredol a daideg daideg un. Good evening everyone, welcome to Corporate Party Conference 2021. Um, I'm Hugh Lewis and I'm the newly appointed uh, Welsh political officer. Can you officer. Saying it, just say until everyone's well, could you wear masks? No, I'm not doing that, I can't do that, I'm sorry. Oh, there we are then. No, no, no. I'm so, so, well, you watched so, it with your first or see? Hello, we've got some glitches here, I think. Everyone okay? As I was just saying, welcome to uh, Corporate Party Conference 2021, everybody. Thanks for attending this session of the conference. This evening's event is Senedd Cymru Building Community Power When in Power. And it's essentially this year's parliamentary report from Wales to the Cooperative Party UK-wide. And the event is particularly interesting, exciting even because uniquely within the UK, we have cooperators in government in Wales, uh, uh, some of them having been in government for quite a while. So there are lots of positive things I know that they will have to say that may be of interest uh, to uh, members, not just in Wales, but uh, from elsewhere in, in the UK. Now, our panel this evening will consist of uh, Hugh Arank Davis, MS, who will be chairing this evening's proceedings, and he's also the chair of the Cooperative Party Group within the Senate. We're joined also by Mick Antony, who's Council General for Wales and uh, Minister for the Constitution. We'll also be joined by uh, Vicky Howells, uh, who is the chair of the Cross-Party Group on Co-ops and Mutuals and by Julie James MS, uh, the Minister for Climate Change. Now, Julie, Julie's uh, portfolio, incidentally, contains a lot of cooperative uh, um, interest in terms of things like uh, transport, energy, and regeneration, and housing, by the way. I'll hand over to Hugh, who will chair the dis discussion, as I mentioned, in just a moment, but just a few words on housekeeping, first of all. Uh, please be aware that Tonight's event is being recorded, like all our conference events. So if you're not comfortable with visit video images of yourself being recorded, then don't worry, just join us with your camera switched off. Uh, I'd ask you all, please, also to stay muted until you're called to speak, just to avoid things like... So just to avoid things like uh, uh, doorbells, barking dogs, <laughs> rampaging toddlers or rampaging adults for that matter, uh, cutting across the, the dialogue of the speakers and the members. After the speakers have said their bit, we'll have a question and answer session for members uh, attending. If you want to put a question to a panel member, play, please uh, either raise your Zoom hand or type a question into chat uh, for me to read out, or you could email uh, events at party.coop, that's party.coop without the hyphen. Um, okay, events at party.coop. Closed captioning is available by pressing the CC button at the bottom of your screen. And um, just to say, no one needs reminding, but this is a cooperative party event. So please abide by our cooperative ethos, treating everybody with respect. And if you're asking a question, it's uh, great if you can keep it to cooperative issues. Now, please don't feel constrained if you're not uh, living in Wales or you're not from Wales. That doesn't matter. We welcome questions from all members present and are quite keen actually uh, uh, to show showcase uh, uh, Welsh cooperators uh, in government, as I say. So with that, I'll hand over to tonight's chair, Iwaranka Davis. MS. You're from very own. Thank you, Hugh, very much indeed. And uh, good evening, everybody. It's lovely to speak to a national conference here and bring you a welcome uh, from here in Wales as chair of the Senate Cooperative Group. And I have to say from a Senate group which continues to grow in numbers of elected cooperative party members. And many of those are now occupying seats in government as ministers and deputy ministers. And in the elections in the Senate in May, 
we returned 16 cooperative members of the Senate, the largest group ever. So more than half the Labour group are now cooperative politicians, including Vaughan Gethin, MS, the Minister for the Economy, who is also addressing this conference. Now this evening, we're gonna hear from some of those ministers and backbenchers who work cooperatively together to put these principles into action through being in power and in government and through our parliament in Wales, our Senate. So the Senate Cooperative Group is already gearing up for quite an exciting time ahead, working alongside our new Wales Cooperative Political Officer, Hugh Lewis himself, a former assembly member and a minister of some renown. And I know he's gonna bring real energy and focus to the role. But I know he won't mind if in my opening remarks, I would also pay tribute to the wonderful Karen Wilkie, who was such a power behind the Wales Cooperative Party and the Senate group for many years. And I know that former chairs of this group, including Mick Anthony, who's on the call tonight and on the panel, and Jeremy Miles, and all current and former members of the group, would like to thank Karen publicly and formally for all she has done, and to welcome Hugh to this role as well. Uh, cooperation is embedded into the government in Wales. We've got a minister with direct responsibility, but also right across government, as we'll hear shortly from the contributions from Julie James, who heads up the groundbreaking Ministry for Climate Change, and from Mick Antonio, former chair of our Senate group, and now elevated to the high position of Council General and Minister for the Constitution. Putting cooperation into practice also features strongly in our debates and questions and the day-to-day -day business of the Senate chamber. And even across parties, the cooperative voice is very strong indeed, through, for example, the cross-party group on co-ops and mutuals. And we'll hear in a moment from the chair of that group and the Welsh Labour and Cooperative Senate member, Vicky Howells. So when we in the Senate group push our Labour government for action on cooperative policies, we know that we're pushing at an open door of a government and ministers who understand and believe in cooperation deeply. They want to build that community power. So we welcome that it was our government of Wales, our Welsh Labour government was the first in the world to put the foundational economy at the heart of economic policy, at the centre of the plan for a recovery from the pandemic, in jobs that are anchored in local communities, which echo part of our own in the future cooperative agenda for Wales 2021 manifesto. They put aside nearly short of, just short of five million pound in the last Senate to fund more than 50 trials, including supporting housing associations to look at local supply chains, helping local firms benefit from spending on new homes, or working with food producers to get more local food onto local plates in hospitals and schools, or helping communities take more control of the landscape around their towns for generations to come through using surplus public land to work as forestry management and to make a living, or even on piloting alternative sources of finance, which stop money leaking out of the local economy, or the 10 million pound fund that co-ops and social businesses bid into to make sure that we can make sure the information is super high, where reaches every child in Wales that needs to learn online. Or of course, the work that we do with the Wales Cooperative Centre, who do so much good in Wales, not least to see how we can put mutuals and co-ops at the forefront of our work in Wales. And that, of course, leads to the many cooperative proposals which have made their way into the Welsh Labour Manifesto and are now part of the programme of our government in Wales. And let me just touch on one of those. The commitment to build on our Better Jobs Closer to Home programme and the foundational economy to grow local economies, develop a back in local firms fund to support local businesses, provide greater support for worker buyouts, and with the cooperative sector to seek the double the number of employee owned businesses. So we now have a great challenge of what more we can do across every policy area, working with the Senate group to build community power. Because because we are in power in Wales, we have that privilege. Julie James's massive portfolio, you'll hear from her in a moment, but it's crammed with issues like cooperative housing, uh, buses, the rail franchise, town centre regeneration, leasehold reform, and so on. Jeremy Miles's portfolio is now in education, is dealing with co-op issues like uh, citizenship in the curriculum, young cooperatives in school, and so on. I could go on across every portfolio. So our role in the Senate group 
just to close, is working with cooperators across Wales to encourage and to give courage to ministers to go further with our help and support to make real the desire to be in power, to give power back to people and to own and manage their own businesses and organizations, their local services, their local environment, whatever touches them in their lives, putting the common good into our common hands. Let me just close my opening remarks before we go to some great contributions that are coming with the words of First Minister Mark Drakeford when he addressed the Welsh uh, Cooperative Conference just before the Senate elections. He said, perhaps the true genius of the cooperative movement lies not only in the practical change it helps us achieve today, but also in the progressive vision it set, helps us set out for tomorrow. We need to build on, he said, the excellent work done by the Wales Co-op Centre to promote wealth building. We must lean on the work of the People's Railway Campaign to reshape bus and rail transport. We must use the work we've done in Wales to give the force of law to communities wanting to protect assets of local value and significance for future generation. In each area, enshrining the principle that investments made by the community should see benefits shared by the community. So. As chair of the Senate group, that gives some real hope that Labour can build community power when and because we're in power. So with those opening remarks, we're now, now going to go to what I think will be some really great contributions from ministers and backbenchers within the Senate group. Now, I believe, first of all, we're going to turn to my good colleague, Julie James, uh, to talk about uh, her vision and what she can do within her policy area. Welcome, how are you? Not so far, pal. Very nice to, to be here. Um, I think you stole quite a bit of my thunder going through my portfolio there, Hugh, but I'll uh, do my best to follow on from that. So um, one of the really exciting things about what we're doing is that when we formed the new Welsh government after a really successful election with, as uh, both views have said, a really large number of cooperators in, in uh, coming into the government and into the Senate, um, we decided um, that uh, we, when we wrote the manifesto, indeed, actually, that we would be putting climate change and our, our response to the climate emergency and nature emergency at the absolute heart of everything we would do in the government. So um, I have a, a real privilege of being asked by the First Minister to head up that uh, big new portfolio. And that brings together very nearly all of the levers that we have in Wales, um, outside of health to, to really push the uh, climate change um, agenda in Wales. So I've got, as you'd expect, the, uh, the responsibility for driving that agenda, including our net zero targets and our uh, emissions reduction and carbon uh, reduction targets. I've, I've also got the housing and housing related portfolios, which I'll come on to a little bit later. We've got oversight and implementation of the Planning Act and aspects of planning policy, including our national plan, which puts communities and placemaking at the absolute heart of what we do. Um, my colleague, Lee Waters, who's the deputy minister in the portfolio, has transport policy in, and uh, including transport for Wales and the newly nationalised rail services. And also he has regeneration, strategic regeneration and transforming town centres. And I've got uh, energy policy, including small, medium scale energy production, domestic energy, energy efficiency and so on, right up to the big scale renewables that we're looking to develop in a cooperative way in Wales. And I've also got a large number of cross-cutting measures around mitigation and adaptation in relation to climate change, including water policy, land drainage policy, flood and coastal risk, coastal erosion, marine um, uh, and air pollution, national forest policy, biodiversity policy, and the implementation of the nature recovery plan. So you'll see that we've pulled quite a lot of levers together across the government. And one of the main, uh, things that the First Minister asked me to do when he asked me to do this was to bring um, all of those levers to bear across Wales in a Team Wales approach, building on all of the cooperative principles that we know that works, empowering and engaging our communities and making sure that each and every citizen and community in Wales is engaged and uh, empowered in that in that battle. 
And we absolutely are bringing that to the center of what we do. So just turning to housing for an example, one of the big problems we have in Wales at the moment, um, and it's really common to all beautiful parts of the world, is that we have a huge problem with communities who cannot afford to live in and work and thrive in the communities they grew up in, as the pressure on housing stock across uh, countries like the UK grows and the price of that housing um, escalates out of their out of their reach. So we have a number of projects designed to, to uh, mitigate that, but the absolute central one is a community land trust and cooperative housing initiative, where we are using our communities uh, and their engagement with us to come together in groups to uh, we help uh, find them public land that will be suitable and we help them come together with uh, grant aid assistance from the Wales Cooperative Centre who we fund uh, to do this work um, to come together with a local registered social landlord or a stockholding council and build the houses that they need using cooperative principles and on the land that they use they build a mixed development so they build some some social housing for rent, they build some shared equity schemes that have cooperative principles at the heart, so it's a cooperative um, uh, tenancy programme. They build some shared equity where the uh, community land trust overall holds a share in the house and the, uh, the tenant stroke uh, co-owner owns some of it, and then we also have owner-occupied houses that are sold for profit to regenerate the trust's monies and enable it to move on elsewhere. Um, and we also put exemplar uh, environment schemes into those uh, developments. So we, uh, we put a really good green infrastructure in there, excellent drainage, flood protection, really good planting schemes with pollinators and tree cover, um, and really good active travel uh, communications to local services. So the land is chosen specifically for its ability to access uh, on that basis, uh, schools, you know, medical assistance and other public services. And then what we try to do, um, and we're working on one uh, in a really beautiful part of Wales called Solver down in Pembrokeshire at the moment, is we try to join them up with other cooperative um, work, work in the area. So uh, in this particular instance, with the community transport hubs down there. So it's really uh, difficult at the moment to get public services uh, and public transport to work in parts of rural Wales because of the COVID pandemic and their real effect it's had on people's ability to access um, um, public transport and other transport services. Um, and so coming together to make sure that we have proper cooperative principles in allowing people to come together with community transport in our uh, new exemplar housing site is a really big part of what we're doing. And then on top of that, on the energy side, uh, we like to help them to come together in a local energy uh, cooperative and purchase the energy for the housing development together. So that enables them to buy, to get uh, economies of scale, to buy the energy um, in the most renewable way from the grid and to be able to store and use it at high peak demand locally. So uh, we put all kinds of um, carbon neutral uh, equipment in there, solar panels on the roofs, battery storage, water systems, SOS and ground source heat pumps, and what we call SUDS, which is a uh, basically an enormous nearly Olympic sized swimming pool that you put under every 10 houses that holds um, brown water and drainage and make sure that it uh, is properly treated and recycled. So um, what we've tried to do is we've tried to bring those cooperative principles to our working government in a way that really does benefit and empower our communities. And we've got quite a lot of uh, showcase projects that we'd like to show members of the cooperative party and everyone else. So if you want to come down and visit the projects and speak to the communities on the ground who've benefited from this approach, then we'd be really happy to enable you to. So um, that's just a really whirlwind tour of some of the things here that we're doing in the portfolio. And as you see, I only covered about a third of it, so could go on for another hour, but I'll hand, you, hand over back to you instead. Uh, Julie, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for that. And I know it's only a fraction of what you, what, what you cover within your portfolio, but I know other things will come up in questions as well. So hold on for a moment, because we're now going to hear from uh, your other ministerial colleague, uh, Mick Anthony, Council General and Minister for the Constitution, member of the Senate for Pontypridd as well. Uh, Mick, we're over to you. 
Okay, uh, well, Q, Doc, I'm a good holiday. I'm shouting at you. Can have it, had you? Um, thanks, uh, everyone. It's really great to be addressing a uh, um, cooperative conference uh, again. I've attended many times in the past as a delegate and uh, really enjoy uh, participation in the cooperative uh, uh, council as well. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a few things uh, that are really sort of to some extent outside my portfolio because I'm not sure that I will get back onto certain constitutional issues but some of the cooperative issues that I've been involved in the past that have carried through I think and some that I'm involved in to some extent I think are directly relevant. Um, as cooperators the issue of democracy and uh, access to the democratic process participating in voting and so on has always been something that's been of importance to us so there are a lot of uh, proposed reforms coming from the uk government at the moment in terms of the electoral system and of course you will all be aware of the intention of the uk government to try and move towards this uh, far right american id uh, uh, idea of voter id which uh, is really a form of voter suppression uh, as a Welsh government, uh, we have been very uh, uh, vociferous in this, and our position is that we will not consent to those changes taking place within the Welsh elections. And the Welsh elections we have responsibility for are the Senate, that is the Welsh parliamentary elections, and the local government elections. Uh, we don't have the jurisdiction over the UK government elections, but our intention is to really have a totally different and principled approach. Our approach is that we want to actually maximise the ability of people to vote, that anyone who wants to vote, we should be able to uh, do what we can to facilitate. And that means modernising our electoral system. So we have the May 2022, uh, 2022 elections uh, uh, approaching. Uh, there are things that we'd wanted to do up till then uh, that we can't do by way of legislation because of time, but we are going to introduce a number of pilots. And the most important of those pilots is, of course, that we're going to look at the issue of flexible voting. So we're going to launch uh, to issue um, legislative orders, which will allow pilots to uh, uh, in five different local authorities that have volunteered to come forward for these pilots. Uh, some of them are really about how to make the existing electoral system, the postal ballots, uh, postal voting, uh, the ballot forms better. But the key one I think some, some of you, some of the conference will be particularly interested in is of course that we now have 16 year olds voting uh, within Wales in the Senate and local government elections. Uh, and what we intend to do is not only to have a boost in terms of registration within the schools to maximize the number of those at 16 who actually participate in the electoral system. And Julie, I think, and also, or I think Hugh and, uh, mentioned in his early, earlier uh, introduction about the, the work going on in terms of civic education. Uh, but we see no reason why we shouldn't be able to pilot the idea of being able to have ballot boxes in schools. Uh, if you have within their large numbers of 16 to 18 year olds who are registered entitled to vote, uh, why should it be the case that it is awkward or difficult to actually vote? We're also going to look at the idea of flexible voting, that is in different locations and over different days. And from those pilots, those variety of pilots, we're going to look at how we can bring forward uh, in the, the, within the next year, probably within uh, potentially within year three of our uh, Senate term, uh, an electoral reform bill which will not only modernise the electoral system for the 21st century, but basically we'll look at the issue of digitisation and look at all the opportunities that that creates for different ways of uh, voting, voting in different locations, um, and uh, I think also increasing the access for those with disability, those with uh, uh, eye limitation, with uh, sight limitations and so on. Uh, and there are many lessons from around the world. But doing this ourselves, codifying, consolidating the law uh, and also modernising it uh, and also ensuring that it is available bilingually, I think will be a, a counterpoint to uh, a UK government which actually sees elections as a burden, you know, so that the uh, their response to uh, electoral reform is how to make it more difficult to particularly working class communities to, to vote. And we see that even within the mayoral elections that where Labour won 13 out, Labour 11 out of the, uh, 11 out of the 13 uh, mayoralties, uh, the Conservative response is not how do you win voters over, but how do you make it, uh, basically how do you make it more difficult for, for Labour to uh, win 
uh, those mayoralties. So there'll be uh, legislation which I think will be based on a series of fundamental principles about uh, the uh, accessibility and the importance of voting and the health of, uh, of our democracy. So that's one area. The other area I'd like to mention, which again I think is of uh, of importance, and that is the issue of social partnership. We, we operate a unique model whereby government, trade unions and business get together to uh, discuss and to engage in those areas of common social and economic policy. Uh, the social partnership bill, which is being brought forward by uh, Hannah Blythin, uh, the minister, uh, has responsibility for that. Uh, I'm only talking about it because uh, I was involved in it in the last Senate in an early stage. Uh, and I think it is a matter that I'm sure Hannah would be really happy for us to be talking about now. That is legislation that's going to come that aims to look at how we can use our seven or eight billion pounds of procurement each year in an ethical way, a way which will seek to achieve socioeconomic objectives, standards of employment, uh, fair work, uh, and also, uh, I think, the, the importance of collective bargaining, trade union uh, engagement and so on. Now, of course, there are limitations in what we can do within our competence. So we are not setting about changing uh, employment law because we don't have that competence. But we can, of course, set the standards and the framework within we which pure uh, procurement to actually take place. And I think putting uh, the social partnership on a statutory basis will be one of the most significant steps forward. And I think a model that at UK level, when we have a, a Labour and Cooperative government in the future, we'll uh, uh, want to see as a model. And of course, one aspect of it, again, which is under consideration at the moment, will be the issues around monitoring and enforcement, which has always been uh, important. Uh, I would also want to mention very quickly the uh, uh, Robert Owen events, the anniversary uh, of Robert Owen, and I think I think uh, Dave Smith and I know Keith Gordon are actually in on this particular session, who have done so much, in, and again from the Wales Regional Council, uh, to actually start recognising uh, the importance of Robert Owen, someone who was born in Wales, but who is in many ways seen as a founder of the cooperative movement, of the early trade union socialist movement, uh, and and uh, was born, of course, in Newtown in mid Wales. And we had a number of events this summer uh, around that anniversary in Newtown, uh, lectures, talks, discussions, uh, school engagement and so on. And I'm hoping that that is something that will not only become a more regular event, but something that will become almost like a national day for the uh, for the Labour and Cooperative movement uh, within Wales. And the final area I want to talk about is actually fundamental Welsh democracy, the centralisation that UK government is do, seeking to um, undermine devolution uh, across the UK, centralising power in a way that we consider is not only undemocratic, uh, but also is part of a uh, I think a very clear right wing uh, agenda, one that undermines democracy because it undermines the mandates that we have within the Welsh Parliament, within the Scottish Parliament and the Northern Ireland Assembly. We also recognise that, uh, as the First Minister of Wales has said on a number of occasions, that um, the uh, UK has never been closer to break up in his lifetime or never been more at risk in his lifetime. And I think we know that probably over the next five years, uh, there will be almost certainly a referendum in Scotland. Uh, there may well be uh, issues in respect of the situation in Northern Ireland. Uh, we know there are a lot of pressures within England in terms of uh, uh, Westminster and the uh, regions within England and the mayoralties and so on. And we know also that there is a lot of cross-party agreement that the current constitutional arrangements, which are being abused by the UK government, uh, are not fit for purpose. And there has to come, there has to come change. So the way we've approached this is that, uh, and it's uh, is that as part of the um, Labour manifesto that uh, for the Senate May elections, and it's elections that we as Labour and Cooperative members stood on uh, as well. Um, so we have a mandate now, we have part of the Welsh Government programme is to establish a constitutional commission, a commission uh, that will be uh, a Welsh commission to engage with the people of Wales, to look at the issues around the future of Wales, how the constitutional uh, relationship between Wales and the other nations of the UK can be reformed, can be democratised and turned into a constitutional reform of one that is respect between nations, well, one that has at its heart 
I think the empowerment of individuals and communities. And I think those principles are ones that will be very uh, uh, important uh, to us as cooperators. Uh, we will be making announcements uh, in the next few weeks uh, about the launch of that particular commission, uh, but it will be a very significant event because it will contribute to a debate that I think is not only developing in Scotland and Northern Ireland, but also uh, within England. Even the Conservative Party are looking at the issue of devolution, looking at it in terms of how they can actually undermine it rather than how they can actually uh, develop uh, the issue of devolution. Uh, and for us, we think devolution is good for the UK. We think the empowerment of people and communities and the democratisation of our society is something that is good. But our commission is going to look at what the opportunities are, how best we can enhance and improve Welsh democracy and how we can actually reform and improve our relationship with the other nations of the UK. And I think that will be a very important step forward. It will be at the same time, of course, as the UK uh, Labour Party's constitutional commission that's being uh, uh, operated by uh, Gordon Brown at the moment. So I think those are things that when that commission takes place, when those engagement process take place, I think it is really important that across Wales, people and communities and cooperators put their own input into that commission uh, and also from further afield as well. Thanks. Mick, thank you very much indeed. And that was really wide ranging as well. So thank you so much. I'm sure the people who are on this, we got a good crowd here within this uh, particular conference event, will be storing up questions already. I'll just remind you, before we go to the final presentation, we open for questions. All you need to do is to put your electronic hand up and we can get into some conversation if you've got comments or questions. So get yourself ready now, think about what you're gonna ask. Um, before we go to our final presentation, uh, from good colleague Vicky Howells, who is chair of the Cross Party Group on Cooperatives and Mutuals, as well as being a good colleague on the Senate Cooperative Group as well. Vicky, we're all yours. Thanks very much, Hugh, and good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be able to join you this evening. I'm Vicky Howells, and I'm the Senate member for the Cannon Valley. And uh, in my spare time, a bit, a bit of a history buff. So I'll just regale you with that uh, one little fact, and that's the fact that my constituency contains uh, the village of Cumbach, where I was born and raised. And it was also the place where uh, Co-op Store was founded in 1860, which has a real claim to fame. It wasn't the first Co-op Store in Wales, but it has been noted uh, by the Co-op historian Alan Burge as being the first Co-op to endure, and as a result, the beginning of cooperation in Wales. So I feel as though um, I have uh, cooperative values very firmly in my blood and I'm proud to be representing that community with its rich history of cooperative values. I'm also proud to be doing so as a member of the Senate supporting a Welsh government where those values are I feel right at the heart of policy making as both Julie James and Mick Anthony have already outlined for us this evening. Um, so I'm speaking to you today in my capacity as chair of the co uh, cooperative uh, and mutuals cross party group, and I just thought that I take a little time to talk about our work and how it chimes with this year's theme building community power. So firstly, a, a little about what cross party groups actually are for those of you that might not be familiar with them. So as their name suggests, they bring together members of the Senate from all parties to discuss any subject area relevant to the work of the Senate. And they provide a key space really where external stakeholders and interested citizens can engage with policy makers to discuss areas of shared concern, um, such as in this case, the cooperatives and mutuals sector and and indeed really if you look at it the principles and my and uh, pinning uh, the groups themselves are about people joining together on an equal democratic basis to push for change so in that respect the the principles and pinning cross party groups are those of the cooperative movement now the cooperative and mutuals cross party group was founded 12 years ago so it's a, a well established group and I believe I'm the fifth standing member and the first woman to chair the group and I was elected to that role in 2018. Uh, conference has already heard from one of my predecessors, my colleague uh, Mick Anthony and his immediate uh, predecessor Vaughan Gethin will I know be delivering a keynote speech um, 
to conference on Saturday in his capacity as the Welsh Government Minister for the Economy. So again, you know, what we see there is cooperative hands holding the levers of power within Welsh Government. During my time in post, the Secretariat for this cross-party group has been provided by the Wales Cooperative Centre, so I just want to put on record my thanks to Derek Walker and his team for all their hard work supporting the group and our important discussions. And I thought I'd just pick out a few key sessions which show how the group promotes cooperative values and community power. So, for example, in one session we focused on cooperative and community-led housing. And we heard from researchers on how these models of housing deliver benefits for providers. It was easier to let properties, rent arrears were reduced, for example, but they provided many more personal benefits to tenants as well. Um, so we took testimony from a resident of the Brithian Mower Housing Co-op in Pembrokeshire, and he said that living there had really transformed uh, the life of both himself and his family. They had more family time, learned new skills, increased self-confidence, and really improved their mental and physical health by reducing feelings of being isolated and disconnected. So that was a really powerful session. And another good session that we held focused on employee ownership, uh, something that Julie James has uh, already touched on. So employee owned businesses, we, we heard, were far more productive than their counterparts, more resilient with an embedded long term approach to decision making. Employee ownership is better for individuals involved, giving the real say in decision making and tackling ingrained inequalities. And that session held within the first year of the pandemic also heard that employee owned businesses were more resilient in these and previous economic maelstroms. Um, we recently held our first formal session of this Senate term, um, well just yesterday in fact, and, and we literally did focus on building community power. Uh, we explored the barriers to creating more opportunities for community energy ownership in communities in Wales. And these are many and varied, but what we must focus on is what we can do to tear them down. The Welsh Government's aim to reach net zero emissions uh, is to be met, and I, and I quote, in a spirit of cooperation and not competition. So community energy really must play a key role in achieving net zero, working with communities, increasing citizen participation, and making people active agents of change. Um, for a final point, I, I just want to reflect as a backbench MS on how sympathetic the Welsh Government is to co-op ideals. I used an oral question in a plenary session uh, this week to ask for a meeting on how we could better promote cooperative forms of community transport, transport which empowers many of the most vulnerable in our communities. And the responsible minister responded with alacrity. And I'm in a process of arranging that meeting now, not just for myself, but uh, with the minister and all the other Labour and Cooperative Backbench Senate members. And that's not a one-off gesture. It, it's just one example of how seriously the Welsh Government takes cooperative party policy and cooperative ideals. Vicky, thank you so much. And that was a really good note to end on as well, because th this isn't simply about uh, one manifesto or uh, one line in a document. It's about the day-to-day -day work that the Welsh Government does with backbenchers um, to actually take forward cooperative ideas. And as I said in my opening remarks, it seems to be an open door when we push at it. Ministers open the door and say, let's talk about this, how we can do it. So thank you so much. Now, uh, thank you to all our panellists. We're going to open up for questions. And I really hope that uh, the good crowd of people in there are going to start popping their hands up because otherwise I'm going to bowl, bowl some real googlies out of things. No, we've got David. Thank you so much. We're going to start with uh, David Smith, who's got his hand up. Over to you, David. Um, thank you, Hugh, and, and thank you for all the um, contributions that we've heard so uh, so far. Very helpful, uh, very inspiring. One of the, as a really avid long-term cooperator, what I find quite frustrating uh, in my own sort of quirky way if I can apologize for that before I say it, is the way in which um, often people are not absolutely clear 
uh, their cooperatives are about economic democracy. So at the moment, we, the Welsh government have got, as people will know, a social enterprise um, strategy. But if you look at the strategy, there's no mention of cooperatives at all uh, within that. And I don't know how many people actually appreciate that um, SM, you know, social enterprises can be uh, philanthropic, they can be charitable, they can have charismatic leaders, but what actually defines cooperatives um, is that they are about economic democracy, placing power in the hands of members. So I'm just wondering what can actually be done um, to be more distinctive in the way in which we use language, in a way that could be supportive of economic democracy, whether it's employee ownership or consumer corps or whatever it might be, and how that might link in with the manifesto commitment for a, a national Robert Owen Day. Uh, it's a really good question there, uh, and, and I don't think it's it's an it's looking at exclusivity for cooperatives, but within but the specificness of actually mentioning and highlighting that and saying that needs to be part of the way forward there within these policy areas. I don't know whether we've got one of our um, government minister colleagues who wants to um, respond to that. Uh, Mick or Julie? Yeah, I'm quite happy to uh, respond to at least part of it anyway. So I think it's a very good point. Um, and it's something we could do with emphasising more in the strategies because you're absolutely right. You know, not all social enterprises are co-ops. Co um, one of the things uh, in what I was talking about with our community land trust, for example, is that they really are cooperative. So they really are based on the idea of economic democracy. Everybody owns an equal share in it and they all have a say. There's a, you know, uh, a structure that allows that. Um, and we do have other forms. We do have shared equity schemes, which are community um, owned projects and so on, which, which are not true cooperatives. So we do get the difference, but I don't disagree at all that we would it would, wouldn't hurt us to run through all our strategy documents and just make sure we're actually singling out a particular type of social enterprise that is a cooperative. Um, we've also got some other policies in the foundational economy work that we're doing and the Better Jobs Closer to Home um, stuff that I started um, to make sure that uh, in our unionized workplaces, we're pushing that kind of economic democracy at the same time. So even if the overarching enterprise isn't a co-op itself, the cooperative principles are, are put to play with the, with the social partnership and the trade unionism that we encourage. And that's part of the economic contract that I'm sure Vaughan will talk about on Saturday, which is one of the kingpins of our strategy. So I, I, I completely agree. It's good to have that drawn to our attention. And uh, I think it's one of the things the cooperative group in the Senate could perhaps do here is uh, do a quick trawl of some of our headline policies to make should we pick that up? I was just thinking exactly that. And I think Hugh uh, and I and the members of the group, uh, Hugh Lewis and I and the members of the group will, will do exactly that because we know it's in there and we know these policies come out, but they're not explicitly saying they're not badged as cooperative. Uh, and if we don't badge them as cooperative, curiously, sometimes people say, well, where is that cooperative stuff you're doing? Oh, it's wrapped up in some other policy. So it's a really good point, David, indeed. Let's uh, go to um, Rupinder Singh, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, wonderful to be with everybody here. Uh, I'm really pleased to hear how much good work the Cold Party is doing in the Wales. I just want to know if you will be producing some report to show how much cooperative the economy have as a share increased during this uh, uh, Labour Party's uh, uh, agenda that they're trying to promote. So it would be really nice that we can hear some numbers in, at some stage that when you have a right government in place, how much these things can you know grow. So that that's just a request, that's all. Thank you. It's a really good question, Rupinda, and I, and I, and I might come to some of our, our colleagues again on the, on the panel on that. The Welsh Government has got actually had this in the manifesto this time, uh, that it would seek to double the cooperative economy, so the, that the, that's owned and managed by workers themselves. Now, that's a heck of an ambition. Uh, I wonder, Mick or Julie, do you have... I, I, I've got, I mean, yes, a couple of comments, Hugh, on, on that, because 
I, I think that's absolutely right. I think we need that actually focus on what is happening actually on the ground, the cooperatives that are there. But I think it's worth mentioning, isn't it, that we do actually fund the Welsh Cooperative Centre. And the Welsh Cooperative Centre is a, a unique body because that is the body that is funded to give assistance and support to the development of cooperatives. So although it's arm's length from Welsh Government, uh, there clearly is a, a common interest there. Uh, and I'm sure there may well be discussions around the work of the Cooperative Centre during the other part of conference. And I'd be surprised, obviously, Vaughan Gethin will probably refer to it. But I mean, uh, we, we can certainly get that information and their reports and the information they have that is, in fact, online. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we actually have that data with us at this very moment in time, but it's an important point. Thanks very much, Mick. Now, I'm going to try and throw some of these questions around. And I can see we've got one question in there from in the box there from Jean Sylvan Evans. Jean, do you want to ask your question or do you want me to ask it? I'd like you to ask it. Okay, thank you, Jean. Jean, uh, uh, sorry, I'm going to put this to Vicky. The question from Jean is how many and which parties are represented in the co op and mutuals? Cross party group. This is an interesting one, Vicky, because we're relying on you to spread the gospel wider than the Labour Party. Yeah, well, I'm I'm really pleased to say actually that uh, all of the the main parties are represented. Um, so we've got Plaid Cymru represented in there, and also the the Tories as well. Um, so there are many more Labour members as you would expect. Uh, but it's good to see other parties taking an interest in cooperative ideas, uh, a real genuine interest, I would say, as well. Um, and in our last meeting, we had representatives from all those three parties. Uh, we always get a really strong turnout, actually, to the cross-party group. Um, so I see that as being something that will uh, carry on now for the rest of the Senate term. Thank you, Vicky. Um, and we'll go now to Jack, Jack Dunn, and then I'll, uh, Barbara, I can see you've got your hand up as well, but Jack first. Uh, thank you very much, Hugh. Thank you all to the panelists here. Um, I'm sure many of you have been uh, keeping up with the news and the events that have happened today uh, concerning uh, Newcastle United and the uh, Saudi, Arabia, um, uh, Saudi Arabia interests in taking over, which I think has now just gone through. Um, I remember earlier on uh, this April, um, as the European Super League was taking off, that um, the Cooperative Party came out with a big statement about club ownership. However, with Wales being in a very unique position um, at the moment, uh, especially considering looking at Brexit FC and the success of um, how communities have gathered around Ryan Reynolds taking over here, um, I just think in that community, uh, get reaching out and reaching towards communities, whether we can put more of an interest in um, community, uh, community run, community owned sports um, uh, groups, especially football clubs. Uh, I think if we're going to get into this idea of um, ownership and uh, democracy, um, we need to start with what people really care about. And as somebody who has, uh, you know, knocked on thousands of doors, um, many of them for Julie James uh, this evening, um, I, I can tell you that not many people care too much about when I, when I go around knocking on the door when it's about politics. But when it comes to football, I've, you can't go past the packed pub um, or, you know, watching people walk out of the Liberty or walk into the Liberty. You know, it's, um, well, it's not called that now, it's at SwanseaStadium.com. Um, it's, uh, it's a huge part of our community. And I think uh, club ownership and public ownership is something that we uh, we need to start striving for and put into the forefront, especially here in Wales. And I just wanted panelists' opinions on that. Well, I don't know who to put that to on our panel. Who's the one who's been following the headlines today? I've seen it on the periphery of my vision. And who's the football supporter here? Mick? I well, I think I'm a football supporter. I'm a Spurs fan. I'm not sure whether that counts, but uh, it's, uh, it's it's one thing. And I do go and watch uh, Cardiff City and, and Swansea as well when I used to go down the Vetch uh, many, many, uh, many years ago when I lived in uh, uh, the Swansea area. Listen, this, this is this is uh, this has been a, a big issue. Um, 
first of all, the, the money in football clubs, it's, it's ties and links with the gambling industry, which almost owns the, uh, it now. And how impressive we are that Swansea actually made that break uh, from the uh, gambling industry. It's very impressed with their, with their commitment. But the big issue, and it's not an area that's within the devolved powers, as far as I understand it, for the, the Welsh Parliament, uh, and that is that there should be a statutory right for fans, fans' ownership and certain regulatory empowerments in terms of football, that, it, that it's linked to the community. And one of the grave, the big disasters with football, I believe, over the recent decades has been the mass corporatization, the global corporatization of it. And uh, Ashley going, I don't think, makes things much better, actually, for Newcastle, other than those who don't like uh, Ashley, and I think there's many who do. But it's the fact that you now have some Saudi corporate interest, which basically sees football at that level as a sort of cash cow and the manipulation the speculation of finance, as we've seen with Manchester United and so on. Of course, at the, at, the, at, the, at the very base levels, of course, many clubs are in fact effectively mutuals or cooperatives and so on. And I think the issue, the link there between community assets and the support of those, it is something we've talked about. And I have to say, in fairness, we haven't actually progressed it as a way in which we did, I think, a number of years uh, ago, where we were talking about the transfer of assets and the support of cooperatives uh, with regard to sport. So look, th th thanks for raising that. I think there's a lot more to be to be done on that. And I think that is something that uh, maybe that's, again, something for the cooperative group, because we did start doing a lot of work on that. And we had quite a number of promises. And uh, uh, for a whole variety of reasons, they didn't materialise in the way we wanted. And of course, it went off the radar for a while. But I think you're absolutely spot on now. And as we come out of COVID, the importance of sport to our communities and so on, and the support that we can give, but also the protection of the assets that exist in our communities uh, is going to be really, really quite vital. So uh, it's only sort of half an answer to the question, but, uh, um, you know, I, 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 the point is, I think, really, really well made in terms of one of the many things that we really need to develop policy on. Great question. And I think you're providing some work for us here now within the Senate group as well, Jack. So uh, thank you. Uh, that'll be an interesting one. Barbara, we're going to come to you. Thanks for being patient there. Yeah, thanks, Hugh, and thanks to the speakers. It's been really interesting tonight. So linking the spreading the gospel idea and also the Constitution Commission, um, and I'm from the South East Wales branch, where they, people want to talk about um, independent Wales. So... I think it's going to be very important to talk to the public as well as to the other parts of the UK. And I just wondered if you have any plans to do that, how that will go ahead. Um, no, I'm guessing this is probably going to be one for Mick unless somebody else wants to pick it up. Um, but it's interesting, Mick, of course, that um, there's been quite a, a lot of uh, debate and policy thinking within Welsh Labour on this already. You've been very involved with it. Uh, yes, I mean, you're right. I mean, the, the, what's very, very clear is that there is certainly a, uh, a, a momentum, a political shift uh, in thinking about the relationship between Wales and the rest of the UK. Some of it is a consequence of seeing the what, what it's like having a conservative, a very right-wing centralising conservative government, also seeing the response of that government to I think the to the regions of England and also to the nations of uh, uh, of the rest of the UK and almost the disdain with which uh, and sometimes contempt with which I think we feel uh, uh, treated by by some of the activities. The reason for setting up our own commission is because. Uh, we know that there is reform. There is, uh, in fact, a lot of cross-party agreement that there has to be reform. And I've discussed this with many constituency uh, Labour parties uh, over the past uh, few months. Uh, and uh, the, you know, the motivation and what people actually want to see is a change. When you ask them what independence means, means many different things. What we are going to do is have a conversation with the people of Wales. Now, the Commission will, when it's uh, launched in a few weeks' time, will be independent of government. But it will have specific terms of reference, I believe, uh, that will uh, be about looking to what the future of Wales should be. How can, we, what, how can democracy be improved within Wales? Uh, how can our governance and our relationships 
relationship be? Uh, what should happen? Should the uh, what should happen, for example, if the UK were to uh, fragment? I think all those are things that we actually have to look at and we have to be prepared for. But we have to do it on a basis, I think, of socialist and cooperative principles that fundamentally what is the constitution what is constitutional reform about it's about firstly those laws that impact on people's lives so much uh, how do you ensure that people are empowered how do you ensure that communities are empowered so people have the maximum say over those decisions it's also about subsidiarity the decisions that can be taken in wales should be taken in wales those where we have to cooperate and work with other nations of the uk on common interest and there are many of them uh, are are the ones where we need a proper system of governance for. So our view is really that look, we can't be for London to say what is best for Wales, but we need to have that consensus amongst the people of Wales themselves as to what we think those reforms should be, how should we re react to events. And that is why we're having that commission. The Tories are uh, opposed to it, but I, I, just put it, I just put it this way. When you have the problem that we have where we put forward proposals for reform, the UK government won't in listen, what do you do? Well, I think the only thing you can do is go back to the people of Wales and engage with them to say to them, how do you think our future should change? What do you think is in your interest? And uh, that is what the Commission will seek to do. Uh, Mick, thank you very, very much. Some brilliant questions here tonight. Now, you, you know the programme just a minute on Radio 4. I'm now going to go to each of our panellists for one minute maximum, everybody, just for any wrap up uh, thoughts. And we'll do it in the um, We'll do it starting with Julie. Uh, and Julie, if you can do a minute to wrap up, including uh, the question in the, in the box there on renewable energy and what that might mean in terms of cooperatives as well. Off you go, one minute. Uh, sorry, Hugh, I can't see the question in the box, but Renewables, we're about to do a deep dive with the Deputy Minister, engaging all the communities of Wales to see what the barriers are and see how we can get community engagement. And we're also about to form a Welsh publicly owned energy company uh, to bring community uh, uh, trust type policies to that. Um, and to sum up, I think we absolutely do put cooperation, community empowerment, community engagement, and that kind of economic democracy at the heart of everything we do. And I am absolutely looking forward to doing that for the rest of the Senator. That is brilliant. Thank you, Julie. Over to you, Mick Antonio. One minute. OK, well, all, all I'm going to say is this. Uh, we have a Labour government uh, with a lot of Labour and cooperative members in that particular government. We're going to go through a very, very hard time because we're facing not only pressure from the UK government, but we are certainly facing financial austerity. But despite all of that and despite the intensely difficult decisions we have, my God, doesn't it make a difference to actually have a Labour and cooperative government in Wales that we can actually do things, we can present different values, even though there are those challenges and that's I think uh, maybe uh, for the rest of the UK can look at why we were so successful in Wales in our elections and uh, maybe there are lessons to be learned there. Thank you. Well done Mick and Vicky, one minute for you. Thanks Hugh. Um, as a backbencher, one thing that I've been really interested in is pushing the idea of a vacant land tax, which I know that the Welsh Government is committed to doing when it gets those uh, devolved levers. Um, but thinking about it with a cooperative spin, what I would like to see maybe intertwined with that um, it are some policies which make it more straightforward, easier for communities to take cooperative ownership of parcels of land, those kind of derelict parcels of land that sit in our communities that people look at and think you know we could do something great with that it could be turning a piece of land um, into a local veg allotment that would grow veg for uh, a village uh, pantry scheme um, it could be using a parcel of land to build a new community center which is run on a cooperative model so that's the kind of area that I'd like to be pushing in uh, with cooperative values uh, from the back benches. Thank you, Vicky, so much. Listen, you've all been great. My panellists have been superb. Hugh, thanks for the introduction at the beginning as well and for the housekeeping. But most of all, thank all of you for some brilliant questions. Great discussion. It is one of the benefits we have that we can speak to ministers, backbenchers here in a smart, clever little country like Wales and get things done because we get cooperation very deeply indeed. So, Diolch and Bawri Awni Chigid. Thank you all so much indeed uh, this evening. It's been really good. Let's keep the conversation going and all the best with the rest of the conference. Not like I